FETSAS plays an important role in the governance and management of all schools in South Africa, in the sense that there are so many legal aspects and governance matters in education, of which most principals and educators still have limited experience. It is important for a school to be a member of FETSAS, as not only are we the leaders in school governance and management, but we also train, inform, guide and advise all our members in best practice and experienced solutions. Who is FETSAS? FETSAS is the national representative organization for school governing bodies. FETSAS informs, organizes, mobilizes and develops its members to achieve and maintain the highest international standards in school governance and management. We advise within the public and private educational sectors, focusing on the foundation, intermediate and senior phases. The school's governing body or SGB operates primarily outside the classroom. It is the SGB's task to make sure everything outside the classroom is in shape that infrastructure, discipline, budgets, human resources and finances are efficiently managed. FETSAS can assist you with all the aspects of your school governing board's primary role, which is creating a conducive environment in the best interest of the school. Furthermore, FETSAS can assist in strategic planning, sound financial management and human resources aspects such as appointment, discipline and termination of contract processes. When dealing with appointments of principals, FETSAS wants to support you to appoint the best possible leadership candidates for your school, for the sake of our children. Be a part of FETSAS and know that you are part of a larger community that will always provide you with the latest information which is accurate and reliable. There is always someone within FETSAS who has the experience of past challenges and solutions, simply a call away. We at FETSAS will walk alongside you to take your governing body forward to achieve greater heights. FETSAS has extensive experience in education matters. As an active, dynamic organization, it is fully informed of developments and restructuring in the education field and can advise its members accordingly. FETSAS is a democratic, non-political organization and members elect their leaders along the lines of the national school governing body elections. What does FETSAS stand for? FETSAS believes in maximum autonomy for governing bodies and therefore strives to expand governing bodies' rights, competencies and skills. FETSAS supports and promotes governing bodies' powers and the rights as defined in the legal framework of the Constitution. South African Schools Act and Acceptable Governance Principles. Former State President Nelson Mandela said, Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Education is a great engine for personal development. Through education, the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor. Children of mine workers become heads of mines. The child of farm workers can become president of the country. Here at FETSAS, we do what we do because we love our children, we love our schools and we love our country. We look forward to being of service to every school governing body in South Africa. Hey yeah, folks, welcome and good afternoon. My name is Paul Rankin. Um, welcome to the session today, our first, believe it or not, Tech Talk of 2022. Um, for those of you that don't know who we are, my name is Paul Rankin. I'm the Corporate Manager, Corporate and Business Development Manager. I'm based in the Green Hills of KZN. Um, and as I can see the numbers coming through, really good to see everybody on board. Paul, I need to open up my camera. There we go. There we go. It was just uh, frozen there for a while. Good afternoon, everybody. Goedemiddag allemaal. Como estas? Bonjour. I think that is uh, covering the languages of the people in the panel as well. Uh, it's so good to see you guys. And as Paul said, first Tech Talk session for the year. Um, it's not because we didn't have anything to say in the first term, but I think a lot of us um, had a lot of webinars last year, and it was good to be in a different kind of 
uh, more physical space for the uh, start of this year. But we're very excited about this session, uh, reinvent the classroom with HP. And uh, before, I'm, before I introduce the team and uh, just set the scene, I just want to share my screen quickly and let's get going with the session. <clears throat> There we go. Just welcome to the Center for Technology. All our activities this year um, will be under this banner. And yeah, very glad to see that technology use is on the up in our schools and in our society. Welcome to today's session. I think what really pulled me to this session was the quote on the left hand side of the page here. One thoughtful idea has the power to change the world. Um, and it got me thinking about, you know, how many things have changed, redesigning stuff, reinventing stuff. So we're going to be talking with HP and their team uh, about Reinvent the Classroom International. This is not the first one that we've had with uh, Matthias and the HP team. Uh, we had one in June of 2021 as well, I think it was, uh, with a lot of good feedback on that rethinking how education and the classroom should take place. Uh, and there's a little picture in there. I want to quickly um, just acknowledge our guests, uh, everyone in the in the session. Uh, I see a few good names or well-known names. Uh, Franz, good om jou te sien. Mariki, lekker om jou daar te sien. Uh, some other guests that I haven't seen for a while. Uh, really glad to, to have you in the session. And then our panelists, um, they're not going to be able to, well, if they open their cameras quickly, you might be able to see them in the speaker view or the grid view. We've got uh, Matthias, Matthias, uh, international speaker with us today and excited about life, excited about education. Um, and we really learned a lot from him. We've got Kimberly Law, we've got uh, Stanton and Amit and uh, the rest of the team there. So they're gonna introduce themselves. I'm not gonna waste time with their CVs now. They're gonna introduce themselves as they start speaking, but we've got a good team of people that's gonna share thoughts uh, with our schools um, about how to rethink and do something differently. The agenda for today is a fairly lengthy uh, agenda, but we are really talking about something super important. And what I've found over the last few weeks is where we've had reflection meetings rather than agenda meetings, because it seems like we're online, we've got to keep rushing and go for it, and there's an agenda, but we've, we've got quality information, not short information. <laughs> so we're going to be running till about quarter to four with, with presentations, hopefully not that long, but we've, we've allotted that space and then a strong Q&A session at the end. So we're going to be handing over to Matthias very shortly. He's going to talk about the uh, RTCI program and the benefits. He's going to hand over to Amit and uh, he's going to hand over to Stanton and Kimberly. Before that happens, though, I just want to give us some opening thoughts here and why the Center for Technology is engaging in these type of discussions and, and the things that we're, we're thinking about and talking about. Um, for the past few years, we've been saying that we've got to learn as we live. That was our slogan and our mantra and our logo and everything compared. We, we wanted to make sure that our living spaces, how we perceive normal, <laughs> is also reflected in our education space. We needed to, to progress at the same speed, at the same level. If your car has Bluetooth, but your school has, I don't know, an overhead projector, we're, we're really struggling <laughs> with, with context there. So, so that's what the, the Center for Technology is trying to, to persuade people to just think differently. Hence the idea of one thoughtful idea, one great idea can change us. So, so what is normal? Um, I said in the video, uh, promo video, that TVs don't look the same now as they did 20 years ago. They're now flat screen, they don't have the big tube, they just get redesigned. And the new TV is the normal TV. It's not a new normal TV, it is just the de facto TV. Uh, cars look different. So we've got cars with electronic, uh, electric uh, propulsion rather than petrol propulsion. A lot of things change. In the olden days, the kitchen was a slave room nowadays it's the heartbeat of the household and everything is built around the kitchen <laughs> you know so things change we redesign things to make it better and to make it more uh, efficient and, and enhance our lives the same with how we look at school how we use technology how we implement it i think we've got to be constantly redesigning um, even clothes there's a big industry of design of clothes so <laughs> In saying that, I started with what is normal, and I think a lot of people are uh, pretty
really fed up with the phrase the new normal. It implies that there's an old normal, which cannot be because normal is just normal. <laughs> you can't go back to something that we've passed. When I thought about this over the start of the year and I read some articles during the December holiday, I, I read some material that people say, the need that we actually have is not normality, but stability. I wanna say that again. <laughs> we don't need normal, we need stable. And past 26 months have really been unstable, not necessarily abnormal, because anything can change to our plans. Anything can happen to our plans and it changes. What was normal is now not normal anymore, but it's the instability that flusters us. It's like load shedding, starting at two, ending at 4.30, but at 4.35, it hasn't started, the, the power hasn't come on. Suddenly we're unstable because we don't know if it's ever coming on. So this year we're talking about being stable, rethinking, redesigning, but not considering anything normal. It's just the way it is. So. So that's the one great idea that I have for today is let's go for stable instead of normal. I'm gonna um, give you a quick anecdotal uh, investment into EdTech over the past 10 years slide. How, how normal has changed. <laughs> 10 years ago, people invested pension fund money into other sectors. Look at where it's going now. A doubling from 2019, about tripling from 2019 to 2021. This is where venture capital money is going into edtech. The people that looks into the future is seeing that edtech and surroundings, education, is deserving of high investment. But if you look at it, there's a big change. I want to splash my my mouse in the middle. Way before the pandemic, people started thinking this. So we're not redesigning because of the pandemic, but we're just building forward, which was accelerated way back in 2015, 16, and 17, and the big jump in 2018 already. So that was just a thought that I wanted to share with you. The whole world of investment banking is thinking that this is the new thing for the future, which is right, left or right. Um, today, we're watching um, mostly on our screens, uh, 100 years ago, the typewriter was brilliant, but we can't see ourselves on a blank piece of paper. So hopefully this gives you a picture of what is normal and what is stable. Let's go for it. Um, over to the team. I'm going to stop sharing, Matthias. Welcome. Como estas? Muy bien. Soy de... No, my name... Me llamo es Rian van der Berg. Soy de Africa del Sur. Uh, and welcome. That's the contents of my Spanish that I've just shared with you, apart from que hora es or uh, uno cerveza por favor, um, that you will know. So welcome to the session and please share with us. Uh, we're really interested in hearing what you say. Thank, thank you so much, Rian. Just, just a little thing, if you don't realize, I'm actually not in Spanish, I'm Brazilian. So you should switch that to Portuguese. So, yeah, but that, 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 that is fine. So good afternoon, everybody. It's, it's a pleasure to be with, with, with all of you. Uh, I, I'm glad that I can tease people that they still think that I'm not Brazilian. It's kind of a weird, but uh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me for the second time. And uh, align with what you said, right? I love the slides that, that you kind of uh, brought it in. I should actually switch my agenda with the one with the, the questions, right? That you posed on it, because that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish, right? So instead of just uh, presenting you guys, what is the technology and everything else, I would like to provoke you a little bit. Um, and uh, and the, 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 the provocation that I want to do is that um, if you could change how tomorrow will look like, what would you do? Right. And the reason why I kind of would like to set this kind of a mindset is that the only way for us to predict the future is to, well, to make it happen. Right. So, so keep, keep, keep that in mind. So I'm trying to do a little push on it and, uh, and uh, the, the thought provoking kind of a, a idea that I do have to bring for you guys today is to is start with a very simple kind of a idea. Right. If we have to redesign, right, for the future. So you want to predict how the future will look like, uh, what, what, what we have to do, right, to make it happen. Is this fair enough, Rian? Is fair enough to kind of uh, start with this? Happy. Is okay, so, so just confirm to me that you can actually see my presentation. I'm seeing your slides, but not your presentation. Hold on, it, it's coming.
I'll just there we go, you're all good to go. Man. So, so Rian, what's your definition of normal, right? What, 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 what is normal, right? And again, for every single one of you, if I ask what's normal, I guarantee I'm going to get a different definition from it, right? So it's kind of a tricky to make that 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 question. So to kind of frame this a little bit, let me see if I can go through basically three topics, right? Let me see if we are on the same page that what we see as education where we sit today. Uh, how can we now pick it up? In my opinion the best opportunity to modernize human capital development globally because we were thrown a curveball back in March 2020 in which, well, schools cannot happen anymore. You cannot go to school and yeah, you have to change. So uh, how can we take this instead of being a challenge for today, look at this as an opportunity for the future, right? And, uh, and the other thing that I would like to kind of throw at you guys is that I don't like to wait to make this happen. So I would love to see if we can together put a plan to make it happen now. Is that okay? And then I'll open up for some question and answers, okay? So uh, let, let, let's say if we're on the same kind of a line here. For us, back in March, 2020, the way we teach and learn has changed forever, right? And, uh, and we kind of got some learnings from the pandemic, right? Because again, what happened in 2020, people reacted to it. Oh my God, what, what do I have to do? The Holland IQ chart that you showed, Rian, that shows the investment on that tech. If you see the biggest jump on the investments actually came from the United States. Because before the pandemic, technology penetration schools were around the 50%, so lower 50%. Guess what it sits today? It's the 97 percent. So that little jump that you saw in there, it, yeah, it was a huge investment in the United States because the schools were behind. Uh, not all the kids had access to a tool that, well, allowed them to keep learning. So you estimate billions of dollars of investment to make sure that every single kid here will have an opportunity to, well, go remotely to, to his school. So that, that hollow IQ, I can, I can put the number behind those if you, if you guys are interested in it and help you with, with, that, with that one, right? But on the pandemic, we learned a few things, right? So that was happening throughout this, this, this kind of a challenge, right? Oh, sorry. So the first thing is that the need to have technology to be my kind of a, the, the enabler, right? To be the equity uh, a component, to make sure that I can still teach and learn became clear, right? That without having the tool to be there virtually, it, it was basically impossible. So the global demand from nine to day increased 46%. And you can imagine what cost on us. <laughs> okay, how now do you, well, increase productivity in 46%? Well, it was mission impossible, right? Because supply chains, materials, how do you procure everything? People on it that, by the way, uh, could not go to the manufacturing plants to build anything because, well, they were closed. So, so it was quite challenging, right? In order for us to, to kind of a ramp up production to cover the demand. The second thing that we noticed throughout COVID is that we need to change the way we're teaching and learning. So the need for blended learning strategies, it was more evident than ever. So if you guys had never taken a look at it, what blended learning is, what kind of modalities you have into this one, if you have not really versed yourself before the pandemic, well, now you are, because there, there, there's no option, because you had to, right? You were forced to do that. And the third thing that was important for us is that being connected became even more important, right? Because again, you're in school, you still design in front of you. It's still on the, for the principles of very well, controlled environment, right? You own that experience. Well, now, now you don't because the kids could be anywhere. Your teachers could be anywhere. You guys could be anywhere. And uh, okay, now how do I manage my daily work? So it became quite interesting. And one of the things that we heard from everybody that we surveyed on that period is that even though people that had access to those experiences, they felt not connected as before. I don't know if it's just me, but this for me is not connecting. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm Brazilian. I have people, I need to be with people on it, right? So, so the definition of normality is start 
shifting a little bit, right? Uh, and again, here at HP, we're trying to bring new technologies and bring new tools to make this look as real as possible. But again, it's not the same, right? Uh, and, and, and teachers start adapting a little bit, right? And we start developing new things here at HP to say, eh, how can now we help to find the new normal? So this is a school that, that we kind of build a little prototype of what today is called HP Presence, right? In which students can be at home, students can be at school, and they think they are in the same environment. They have kind of the, the, the same tools to access. The experience should look the same. They could see their classmates. The classmates could see them, right? If the teacher moves around, well, cameras will follow them and so on and so forth. So we developed different experiences that we could deploy to cope with the product or with the problem, which is people are out at school. And that, let's see if we can bring everybody together again. So there was multiple versions of this. And, uh, and you guys probably develop your own way to cope with this, this situation, right? So, so thinking a little bit more strategically, because again, I want to challenge you guys to think a little bit beyond this, right? Uh, one thing that we, we identify as well is what are the top three challenges that school systems are facing globally, right? And interesting enough, they have not changed, which is kind of a, oh, really? Even with COVID, it's still the main challenges are the same. Well, the first one is that I do not have enough money to do everything that I want. Does this sound familiar? I hope it does. Second, there's tons of professional development. And now with COVID, oh my goodness, I have to even find more stuff to learn because, well, now I'm doing everything virtually. What does that mean? How do I prepare myself for the day? How do I organize? It was a nightmare. So to find the trainings and to find the right professional development that fits your need became almost mission impossible, but tons available, right? But again, to navigate through that maze gets complicated. And again, I know you teachers have even less time than we do have to put all of this together. So it, it was a difficult thing to, to see. And the other thing that I noticed clearly is that every single plan that I saw was to develop a solution for the problem at hand. How do I bring uh, kids back to school? How do I connect the teacher to get this class going? Everything was short term. I mean, everything was short term, right? Uh, so clearly, uh, schools are not structured to think a little bit further beyond. Uh, don't have the teams, don't have the capability, do not have the skill set. So that that kind of a, a push to let's think a little bit more longer term, it, it, it was clearly not there, right? Uh, the other thing that we identify is that when we talk specifically with educators, with you teachers in here, right? And we ask, if we have to do something, what is that? And just 94% of you told us that my classroom experience makes a difference. To have it at the right size, to have it the right type, and not to just have technology, to have the right tool for the job every time and everywhere makes all the difference in, well, learning outcomes, right? In how well or how poorly my students will do, right? Oh, by the way, just kind of as a highlight, every single picture that you're seeing in here from this kind of a weird spaces, these are real classrooms that we already transform using a process that I'm gonna be talking a little bit later, right? So this is not just a, an idea, these are real classrooms, right? They are running today. Uh, that we developed together with some of our customers, okay? So to start this one, and Rihanna, I'm gonna ask for help because I just can see my screen, right? I'm gonna make a question to kick this off. What is the role that HP plays in education? Can somebody here in the audience trying to answer that question for me? What is the role that you think HP plays in education? And it's not fair, I said that this classroom, we already been building this, but well, in, again, just on top of your mind, right? What, what is the role that you think we play in education? Anything, Rian? Still no one answering in the Q&A box. Uh, oh my goodness, you guys are this shy? Come on. Uh, they're asking about, oh, there's the first one, facilitating teaching from Lydia. Someone oh, says- Oh, thank you, Lydia. You're very polite. <laughs> Anyone else? The fingers are slow. No? Three, two, one. Okay. 
So because I know that you guys are not going to say much, I kind of uh, pick it up. One of your counterparts, this is from Mexico, right? So this is the principal of Medico Ferrara. He's the CEO, right? At Instituto Briamont in Mexico. And we ask him, so, by the way, Americo, um, what, what, what role do you think HP plays in education? And he told us quite a few things. These are the top three. First, HP manufacturers and distributors conventional computers that actually do not necessarily cover the requirements of the education sector. Fair enough. We have a lot of stuff. We have a few devices there for it, and he didn't have a clue. We have those devices for, for that, right? Second, he said, you guys do not understand my environment at all, all right? Okay, the third is that the solution that you guys bring to the market, probably because we are not building the right devices for you, because you never saw that, uh, is that it doesn't cover my needs, right? Digitalization and technology needs, right? Which was quite interesting for us to hear this, right? But again, a simple answer for this, Rian, in my opinion, is that AHP builds PCs and printers. That's 90% of the, the answers that I get most of the time, right? So uh, I'm going to start with one thing. And the, the thing that I want to make sure that you guys understand is that my team, my team has one simple objective, is to support and enable you to bring better learning outcomes for 100 million people by 2025, okay? I cannot do this without your help. So my commitment to this crowd in here is that what do we have to do to make sure that together we enable better learning outcomes for a million, okay? And to kick off this kind of uh, effort, I would like to make sure that everybody knows this. Back in March, 2020, because teachers did not have the right skill sets to, well, teach remotely, coordinate their day remotely, prepare themselves, communicate with everybody, engage with everybody, assess their work, and bring some innovations. Well, we launched what we call HP Online Teaching Assistant. This is a platform that is available right now for you guys with 38 modules of training that instead of talking about technology, will help you better prepare for the day, better communicate with everybody, better engage with everybody that you guys have to engage, better assess and to add some fun to your classrooms. If you have your phone, please scan this QR code and have fun with it, okay? I'll keep it this uh, 30 seconds here, Rian, so the people in the audience can, can uh, uh, play with it. And it's called Online Teaching Assistant. If you're on your computer, just type hp.com slash OTA. Hopefully that's easy enough hp.com slash OTA. Oh, by the way, we are not going to charge for this. This is our contribution to show that we are committed to enable you to develop better learning outcomes for your students. Okay? Okay, so I'll keep going. If you need to know this, I'll, I'll write it down on the chat later on. Okay? So let's go for our little challenge, right? If we want to take this and kind of move a little bit beyond, right? of uh, just cope with the pro problem. Eh, what do I need to do to bring my kids back to the classroom? What kind of skill sets I need to develop to do my job now? I want you to force you guys to stop thinking about today and think a little bit about beyond. And what do I mean thinking about beyond is that the students that you do have in your classroom today are gonna be the professionals of tomorrow. It's gonna to be the doctor that might save your life. It's gonna be the engineering that will be building better roads in South Africa so they can cope with floods devastating some parts of your country. It's gonna be somebody working on infrastructure to make sure that, well, the pipes will be able to deal with the water so the roads will be ready and not be destroyed just because it's, well, raining, right? So if we want to build a better future for tomorrow, we need to make sure that we are developing the right skill sets on the kids today and prepare them, right? To, well, uh, face the challenges that we still don't know where they are. So it's a quite interesting uh, uh, kind of a value proposition. And for us here at HP, this journey starts with the people. For us, everything that we're doing is about providing the people involved in this process well, better experiences to, well, help them enable better learning experiences to develop better skill sets so they can be better prepared for the future. So we understand 
how to help the people involved in this one together. We design, well, better learning experiences, better experience to develop the right skill sets. And, and the last point of this, use the technology to make sure that everybody will have access to this. Everybody, right? And bring in the equity to be part of our value proposition together. Because the beauty about technology is that a remote school in Newcastle, in Elahani, over there in South Africa, can be as well connected, as well prepared, have the same resources as any other school globally. There is simply no excuse for us to enable those kids over there in Elahani, in Newcastle, right there in South Africa, to have amazing learning experiences. It's not just because they are there, it's because, well, now they have the tools that, well, yeah, they can go and talk to kids in Australia and kids in Spain and kids in the United States and yeah, kids in Johannesburg. Why not, right? So why we do this? Right, and uh, Rihanna, we're gonna use another one that you kind of mentioned, and I'm gonna put a number behind that, right? That we still working for careers that do not exist. Okay, I'll put a number behind that, is that fair? And the number is that 65% of the children getting today into school are gonna be working in jobs that do not exist. And the challenge is that, uh, oops, how do I train them for this, right? What do we need to do? Well. For me, it's simple. It's stop teaching your content and focus on developing the individual that is in front of you. Sounds easy. No, no, it's not, right? This is a 19th century classroom, which by the way, if I put pictures of classrooms that I took in South Africa, will look very familiar. Why we don't do something different? And again, this is a classroom that we designed, right? So this, this, these kids are on a real classroom, real classroom, right? How do we do this? Well, through you educators, which we called our ages of transformation, we need to help you update what you teach and improve the way you're, you're teaching. What does that mean? Well, it means that it doesn't matter the academic strategy that you guys are trying to implement because you know it's the best one at that time for that activity that you're trying to develop for that group of students. Everything around you needs to adapt and execute immediately, immediately, not all the way around. You should not be limited by the space that you have, by the tools you have or the things that you can do. It should be all the way around, which brings me to the third component of this. Now, how do we redesign learning experiences to enable you teachers to, well, update and change the way you're teaching to maximize the human capital that is in front of you, kids? they are gonna be working on careers that still do not exist. Well, for us, the road is very simple. It's stop doing what's, what's designed for the 19th century for industrial revolution, because if you don't remember, I'll help you. Uh, you employees need to perform a task on a specific period of time. Now, do you, do you still have a, a clock in, in your classroom right there in the middle? Well, the reason for that clock is because now you need to perform this activity in three minutes and now in four. Now you have five minutes to do a test or 15 minutes to do a test, 20 questions on it. Does this sound familiar? Well, if it sounds familiar, it's because we're still doing 19th century strategies, right? Uh, it evolves a little bit. And the first reaction to everybody, oh, let's bring the information age to it and let's throw computers at everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> for me, you're simply doing the same thing now with Blink, right? So for us, Let's see if we can rap, replicate today's experiences inside a classroom. How would that look like? Well, this is for us, how exactly it looked like, all right? So instead of just uh, redesigning and putting computers inside, we completely change it. We change the flow. We enable different modalities to be implemented and everything adapts on the fly. This is a real classroom, exactly the same space. Okay, this is in Malaga, Spain. Okay, so let me go for the last portion of this. So we talked about people, we talked about the experiences. Now, selecting the right tool becomes a must. And uh, I know the budget is not there. Oh, I wish I could have all the most powerful computers all the time. And my answer to you is that eh, you might not need it. Why? Because depending on what your focus is, Active learning might be the answer. And then you might need a little bit more powerful computers to run, but sometimes well, consuming it's perfectly fine. So if you wanna develop understanding and remembering, 
fine. Uh, a print brochure might do the, the case for you. But if you're really trying to focus on creating the professionals of the future that can think critically, bring creativity to find new solutions for problems that are still ahead of us, develop innovators, creators, and communicators, let's pick the right tool for the job. Don't, don't, don't just assume that you can do everything with just one tool. And I'm, I'm really tired of seeing school systems, let's develop the technology blueprint for my school and everybody has exactly the same computer. Oh, come on, give me a break, right? Is that, okay, um, let me bring a, a crew to build a house and I give everybody hammers. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's good for a few things, but not to mix cement, right? Imagine you with a hammer trying to mix cement. Yeah, no, it's not the right tool. It's exactly the same thing in here, okay? So picking up the right tool for the job will make a difference in what kind of uh, skill sets you can develop, okay? So going to the third thing, now, how do we get this done, right? And this is kind of the tricky part. And the tricky part is because if we need to work with you to design your classroom of the future that will be helping you design your own experiences, that means that uh, there's not a one size fits all. So for scalability purposes, it's not a good thing because again, I need to do this in 150 countries and uh, yeah, we don't have the manpower, right, to do so. So we had to find a way for us to help you reinvent your classroom, but learning from the failures and the successes that we had globally. So we came up with this idea, instead of building a solution, a prepackaged solution, we decided to create a journey, which we'll call a digital transformation framework. And we named that Reinvent the Classroom, okay? What is basically Reinvent the Classroom? It's a process that we have here at HP that together with you, by listening to your stakeholders, leaders, teachers, and students, we can identify what for you is a meaningful outcome base, right? What are the metrics that you're gonna be using? to fast track your journey, not everybody else's, your journey to what for you is an effective modern teaching learning system. And the picture that you have here, it's a good example of that, right? This is a classroom in Madrid, Spain, in which the school systems uh, back in 2000, oh my God, 15 or 16, let me bring all the technology, let me modernize my school. And we told them, nah, I think we can do better. On the right, it's how that classroom looks like today. Okay, so this is what the kids have been uh, developing there. So this is where they go to school every day. And this process for us is actually very simple, right? To make that investment together with you, the most important things for us to identify is to understand what does meaningful outcomes means to you? And how can we, well, design a process to capture that and start our journey based on it? So. I decided to automate this. So I created an automation engine, which we called uh, an exercise, it's called the readiness assessment, which we can provide to each one of your schools, uh, a survey mechanism that we're gonna give voice on day one to leaders, to teachers, and to students. And based on their feedback, generate a customized report that will tell you what are the things that we need to put together to design our classroom of the future. And that journey, I basically focus on four areas. First, we're gonna to be together, kind of a running with you guys, uh, planning workshops to see what's the future should look like. What are the needs that we do have? What challenge are you guys facing? What are the key com change management components that needs to be in place for us to get this really executed? Once we know, this is what our goals should be. This is where we want to go. We together design your learning experience. Let me repeat that. Together, we design the learning experience. Why? Oh, because again, there's not a one classroom that looks like the other one. There's not one school that it looks like the other one. So yeah, sometimes you like yellow, sometimes you like blue, sometimes you like orange. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's your classroom. We're going to make it look amazing, feel amazing. Right. Once we design that experience to make sure that we are kind of a getting close to our goals, right? 
we are trying enabling that journey to go one step after the other one, then we're going to be mapping what is going to be the skill sets required, right, on the teachers. So then can literally uh, not only design their own experiences, but deploy them and execute them comfortably, right? The first step in this professional development, I already gave that to you. That's online teaching assistant, right? So the basic skill sets that are required to put the first step into this journey, it's already in your PC or your tablet or your phone, right? So you have access to that already. The second portion of this is that once we run the readiness assessment, we know basically kind of a way you are on this journey. And after we have done the workshops on the planning, we can make adjustments on what kind of a training is going to be required to bring you guys to what you are today, to what's what needed for us to deploy this amazing learning experiences. And last but not least, then we pick it up the right tool for the job. Okay, not before that, right there at the end of the journey. And I've been doing this for more than 10 years. And my frustration in this process, Rian, is that I, I got tired of giving governments plans, right? Oh, do this. Oh, this is the idea. This is what you're supposed to do. And I was frustrated that a year later, they have not done much. And I came to realize, because remember the department silos thing that we identified in the beginning? It's not because they don't want, it's because they didn't have the capability to do so, right? Do you have a project management team in your school? that is designed to pick it up, design tough classrooms and get that implemented, make sure the infrastructure will be in place. Well, scheduling the, the training for the teachers, no, that capability was not in place. So because we wanna help you get this done, we are adding capability to the markets that we are addressing with this strategy by providing you the project management. So whatever we design, whatever we plan, design, train and equip, well, we execute for you. So we delivered this. And once this is up and running, we'll be with you on that journey. So if you guys have questions, oh, by the way, I need help with this. How do I prepare myself? How can I kind of prepare my project-based learning with everything that I learned? Yeah, we're going to be with you. Not just on the technology side, managing the life cycle, the manageability and the security parts of it. We want to support you on your journey. Well, to reinvent your classroom of the future today. Okay, sounds simple. But it's kind of a difficult to visualize. Well, let me help you, right? So uh, this is using uh, real case uh, uh, examples. Come on, PC. This is one example of a classroom with the kind of the before and after in uh, Mexico. This uh, was Costa Rica. We changed the library into that. Uh, this is in Peru, which by the way is opening tomorrow. So I have to be with the Peruvian team tomorrow. Uh, yeah, this is the, the transformation that we did. You saw this one, right? You have here behind me, if you can see, still see my screen. This is the, the school in Malaga, Spain. Uh, we did this in Belgium. We did this in Indonesia. This is a public school in Indonesia. So we finalized the, the, the project with the Ministry of Education. This is a private school in Indonesia, right? And, and the beauty of, of kind of putting all of these pieces together, not just the design of the classroom, right, Brian, but making the planning, uh, designing the experience that is going to be relevant for the school, thus enabling the teachers now to have the skill sets to execute on this amazing, right? Uh, no, no classroom and having the right technology is that remember my initial goal, right? If you can see, it might be a little too small for you to read it, but I'll read what I have here on my screen. We want to enable better learning outcomes for 100 million. Remember that one? How do we do this? Is that once we put this journey together, we are going to be measuring. We're going to be telling you that the areas that we work together have this type of development for better, same, or worse. And we're going to tell you that number. How do we know this? Well, because we assess you on day one. Remember that one, that readiness assessment? We took that picture on day one. Guess what we do on day 365? We're going to assess you again. And we're going to be comparing those data points. So this is an example from another school. This is the Jesuit school in Spain, in, in uh, uh, Navarra, Pamplona, over there. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the OECD PISA exams, they do a global testing in schools uh, everywhere around the, the globe. And uh, Spain doesn't do very well uh, in that. They are a little bit behind the OECD average. But this school system is the number one in the country, 14 points above OECD average. 22 points above the country, okay? To the point that this school is not just reinventing their classroom, 
they're calling the program now reinventing the school because 80% of every single learning space has been transformed, right? So because I have one minute left, I want to do this. Remember that question? <laughs> Does anybody want to take a crack out of Rian? Do we have any, any ideas? What is the role HP plays in education? We, we had someone um, come in just off the bell earlier and said they're assisting teachers. But I think let's, let's ask the question again. Uh, anyone right, yeah. Fast, fast anybody? Was I able to change a little bit your idea? I don't know. Maybe. We've got someone saying redesign classroom spaces. Uh, so focus on Well, the this spaces. is one of the things we do, but I'm asking for the role, not what we do. We do a lot of stuff, yeah. Including, uh, yeah, printing and PCs. Yes, <laughs> let me be very clear, yeah. Okay, I'll help you because we don't want to kind of run out of time. So yeah. I, made, I made the question again to the same gentleman. So I asked Americo, okay, after implementing your classroom, and by the way, this is how his classroom looks like. If you guys remember how you look on the beginning, right? The traditional computer lab, right? So uh, Americo told me that it's hey, kind of offer innovative solutions. It's not just a computer anymore. So, okay, good. Anymore, because we still remember, we still build the most amazing PCs and printers globally, right? Uh, the second thing is that the RTCI can actually help you modernize teaching and learning. Just look at his classroom, right? And if you want to innovate, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be working with you guys. So if you want to get this done, right? The only thing you need to do, talk to Rian, talk to the team that's going to be following me. Uh, right here, I'm not going to introduce the team that's going to be helping you to get this done. I want you to start thinking, hmm, if I could do this, how my classroom would look like? And to inspire you, let me show you how a journey like this looks like in real life. <laughs>
So yeah, this is a quite interesting kind of a documentation of what we did. Uh, this was uh, back in June last year, Rian. The kids were on vacation and uh, yeah. we invited them to go back to school. Uh, I thought uh, that none of them would say, no, nah, you're crazy. <laughs> Well, we had a little bit more than what we imagined. So about almost 200 kids sign up for it. And we said, we need 20. So it was horrible because we had to kind of a, kind of a pick them up later on. So we decided to do three age groups. So yeah, now it's 60, not, 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 not as a few. And uh, this is how they, they teach and learn every day. We only documented the, the, their experience. So I truly hope uh, you guys will be next. And uh, just to kind of... Uh, push us into that direction because I showed you quite a few examples, right? Of what we are doing in uh, Central America, Latin America, in Europe, uh, and uh, in Asia Pacific. It's uh, why I don't kind of uh, bring that closer to home, Rian. Is that, is that kind of a good plan, right? And, uh, and if you want to reinvent, who do you guys need to talk to, right? To start bringing and making this wheel for South Africa. So I would like to introduce the most amazing team behind all of this idea that we are doing this globally. And that's uh, Amit, Stanton, Kimberly, and Ranesh from both HP and IT Master. And I'll ask them to kind of a share. Amit, how will this look like when we bring to South Africa? Can you help us out with that one? Yeah, absolutely, Matthias. Thank you very much, firstly, for a very informative attribute on the RTCI. Uh, Rian, I'm just struggling to get my camera activated. I believe the host deactivated my camera. So while we get that sorted out in the background, but yes, yeah, we, we've, we've really want to make sure that we can implement this in South Africa and make sure that it takes off in the pace and the caliber that's been delivered across the board for us in the other regions of not just America, but Europe market as well. It's important for us. Hey, Amit, hey, well, well, one question. What, yeah. what do you have behind you in there? This? Yeah. Secret. What is that? I'll tell you later on. Oh, okay. I'll, so I'll you let you on. go. I'll let you go. I'll, I'll be quiet now. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amit Pusari. I'm the HP Education Lead for South Africa. Amit, Amit sorry, you're um, in presenter mode on our screen, um, in uh, technical mode on our screen. So just... Uh, display settings uh top left yeah, just share okay. again that we see your full slide apologies there thanks any better let's see if it's coming now there yeah. we go all good much better thank you cool cool again sorry everybody uh, my name is Amit Basari. I'm the HP lead uh, for, for South Africa. We have seen the progress in other countries, what the RTCI program has, has done, the significant progress as well in terms of the stats and the real impact in terms of learning capabilities and outcomes that matters. Now let's bring it home to South Africa and get a view of what we have done here. Currently in South Africa, we've engaged with so far three institu institutions. One being Get Ahead, the Cura Holdings Group, and the Advitech Group. Get Ahead College have secured pole position thus far. And they've already advanced to a point where they're implementing the RTCI project in the environment as we speak today. While these deeper discussions and conversations are ongoing with the other two institutions, we have seen significant progress. And hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll be able to implement the RTCI project within some of their labs, their classrooms, and the campuses of the Advitech Group and the Cura Holdings Group. Now, this is a quick synopsis of where we were and where we are with Get Ahead. As you can see, it's a normal picture, it's a normal painting of a day-to-day -day classroom environment across South Africa. We call it the cinema seating environment. To the right of that picture is where we are today with Get Ahead College in the Eastern Cape. The complete design layout, the architectural design as well, and the solution design has been done via the readiness assessment and the HP ambassador as well. I'm gonna pause on there right now because Kimberly, 
and stands and will elaborate further on that there. But I really want to bring to use HP, keep reinventing. Now HP is continuously reinventing and we always reinvent with sustainable being top of mind for us. With global warming and the drastic change in the environment, it is imperative that we all do our share as well. We have seen the floods that happen in KZN, the global warming across the whole of the globe, and it's gonna have a massive impact if we don't change and we don't help the environment as well. With HP, sustainability is massive drive for us. We focus on three key elements that drive our sustainability initiatives, which is housed around planet, people, and community. Within these pillars, there are subcategories that speak to salient areas of the concerned impact that we have seen over the years. Now, the HP Planet Partner Program has developed more than 30 years ago. This program was created to reduce carbon footprint, along with the discontinuing the use of non-biodegradable plastic. This program has also assisted customers, partners in correctly disposing of their ICT items from notebooks, printers, toners, cartridges, any ICT environment, we will take it and we will recycle it for you. Now, this is a shocker for most of us. In fact, it was a shocker for me. With a collection of all the old ICT equipment via the Planet Partner Program, we recycle these items and produce great HP products across the breadth and the depth of the HP portfolio. Our flagship product being the HP Dragonfly is made of recycled equipment and ocean bound plastics. So in South Africa, you see whenever there's bin day, we all take our, our garbage can out there and leave it in the road. We have the guys coming in collecting those plastics from our bin, we are saying we're trying to help them as well. We're trying to remove those, those plastics from the rivers, from the streams, from the oceans, and giving you product from the breadth and portfolio of HP with no sacrifice on the quality of the devices. So to put this into kind of perspective, from 2016, HP recycled 642 metric tons of ICT hardware. That's six years ago, we started this project and this is where we are today. 642 metric tons is what we removed from landfills, from junkyards, from scrapyards. 15.7% of recycled plastics used to make some of the HP portfolio. And the interesting point on the slide is HP eliminated almost 3,000 tons of hard to recycle. These are plastics that are non-biodegradable, which are thrown in landfills, thrown on roads, eventually gone down to the streams and rivers and end up into the ocean and kill the ocean life as well. So we have removed close to 3,000 tons of this plastic. How do we do it? Well, we believe in having a circular economy, but this we really try to assist our customers from purchasing the renewal and recycling of the ICT infrastructure across all spectrums. So we will help you, we'll engage with you in terms of choosing your right product, helping you spec the right product as well. And then moving on in terms of at the end of the product life cycle, taking it back from you as well. The circular economy certainly does assist in reducing the carbon footprint while trying to make sure that our landfills, rivers, and oceans are not polluted. Over and above that, to further supplement the circular economy, HP have also started the HP reforestation project. We have partnered with a local company called C4 Eco Solutions. This project is to restore the degraded pastures educate and train communities on farming and, and agriculture. 
The Eastern Cape region was identified to pilot the program and thereafter expand into other regions. A quick update on Specboom. Specboom is the plant or the tree that we have identified to use in terms of reforestation for us. Specboom is edible. Yes, you heard me right. It's edible with a very high nutritional value. It is a favorite food for black rhinos, elephants, and kudus. The good news is that we can eat it too. Yes, you heard me right. We can eat it too. This has amazing benefits for us. I mean, using the crushed leaves provide the relief of blisters, pimples, and rash. Chewing the leaves can treat a sore throat and mouth infections. I was amazed when I found out the benefits and why we embarked on selecting the speck boom as a plant or tree of choice into Eastern Cape. The overarching element in enablement is the driving force that created the various outreach programs. Now, Mateo showed you the RTCI program. He showed you all the other elements that kind of stack up to give you a better understanding. But this slide encapsulates what we do, not just for students, not for stu uh, teachers, but also for communities out there as well, and individuals. To zone in on the HP Life, which is a platform that links entrepreneurs, innovators, and small business owners worldwide. The platform can be used to further enhance one's skills by registering with one of the 32 free online courses, which comes in eight different language. So the flexibility is there for any one of us to go on at our leisure and become resourceful and teach ourselves what we can do something differently. To mention some of the courses that are offered, we talk about leadership, communications, finance, marketing, operations, and so forth. Our partnership with, with UNESCO indicates that we are steering on the right track for meaningful outcomes, not just from education, but for community and people as well. Now, coupled with the outreach programs we have, education solutions that provide a helping hand, ease the stress and the pressure of our daily lives. The program varies from online teaching assistance that Matthias explained, along with the assistance in facilitating online teaching, learning, and digital content for students. The education solutions also provide online assessments in time of marking and test results being real-time actuals. What you have seen between Mateus and myself, we have shared a very small glimpse of our plan to reshape education, to have a positive impact on the planet and empower community and people with meaningful outcomes. If you want to enable better learning outcomes for you, for your school, for your students, for your community, let's have a chat together. So we can embark on the journey and we can help each other out. Thank you for your time. I hand over to Kimberly to talk to you more about the RTCI. Thank you, Amit. Hi, I'm Kimberly. I'm the HP Education Ambassador here in Europe, Africa, and the Middle, Middle East. And I'm going to talk to you about a school that Amit has mentioned, Get Ahead College, which I'm currently working with at the moment. So as a HP Education Ambassador, my background is as a school teacher. Uh, I recently left teaching uh, in December last year. So um, as you can hear, I'm Australian. I follow the same South African timeline. So our school finished in December last year. Then I moved over to France and I've been working on this project. I actually heard about it in Australia and fell in love with it and chased up HP to uh, let me work with them. 
on this. So at the moment, we're working with Get Ahead College in South Africa. And I'm going to talk about the furniture here. And I've been reading some of the questions that you've been posting. And we get this quite a bit. You know, how, where do we get the funds to do this? Or people also ask, how, how do we change a space uh, when I have such a small classroom? So I'm just going to click into the presentation that I've got here. And for some reason, it won't let me click on. Ah, here we go. There we go. All right. So as you've seen, here is the picture of the before shot of this classroom. So we've got the typical rows, uh, computers just sitting there. And here is our after shot. I'm going to show you the plan. So you've seen a lot of pictures with fantastic furniture, but it's not just, oh, this looks pretty, let's put this here. We actually have some thinking behind how we plan the zone. So with this bird's eye view, you can see that it's quite a standard classroom. It's not very large. And what we've done is we've split it into four zones. So we have a thinking zone, a design zone, maker zone, and a stage zone. So I'm just gonna quickly talk through what that means. So a thinking zone is usually a place where you might start a unit plan. It's a relaxing, comfortable space where you might introduce a topic. So say that topic is about climate change or something about a, a question that you have about how can we improve uh, the school? What, what facilities can we do to improve the school? This is a space where students will start to think and reflect about what they already know about this topic. And then we move to the design zone, which is where the students have their topic question or they know what they're going to be uh, creating or they're, they're going to start designing their ideas. This is a collaborative zone. And because of the space we get ahead, we've actually combined the design and the making zone. Some schools, if they have a larger space, we can differentiate. Uh, sometimes the maker zone, we might run across the back wall. And here, what we've done is we've actually put them uh, together. So the maker zone is then after you've finished your collaboration stage and you know what you want to create, you then go to this area to start creating your work. So you can be using laptops or the different technology that you have in the classroom. And our stage zone here, which you can see at the front with the whiteboard and the projector, this is where our students are going to discuss their project. So it's a place where they present it to the class. Now, I've just gone through that as in you're following a unit plan. However, that doesn't mean that all students are going to follow that exactly. If they know where each area is when they come into the class, some students might need to go back to the thinking zone. Some students might be in the design phase or others are ready to make. It is according to where your students, what the needs of your students. However, we think it's important to have these zones and use them in your lesson planning. So I'm going to click through and actually show you these zones. You probably see them on the back of our, this one is on the back of my picture here. So you can see that this is how we've designed the classroom. We have collaborative tables, these circular tables, so that students can actually be across from each other discussing uh, what they're doing. And even on the walls here, this might look quite pretty, this circle and this uh, red square on the side. 
We have they're actually uh, acoustic uh, boards, and the school even told us that there can be quite a bit of noise uh, from other classrooms. So we try to design the classroom and make sure that if we put these uh, acoustics uh, boards there, it might there'll be less sound in the classroom. So I'm going to click back. So as I said, that's our design and maker zone there. Hey Kim, so, so time out. This is actually a real classroom there in South Africa, right? Yes. Oh, this is okay. the Get Ahead College. Yes. Interesting. So I, I know I'm just trying to see if everybody's <laughs> awake. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Thank you. Yes, this is. I, you know, I wanted to present uh, the class that we're working with in South Africa. Definitely. So you can see at the front there. We have these, and a lot of our uh, the furniture has wheels, so we can move it aside. If we want to make more space, we can move the chairs around the stage area. Uh, again, you have those acoustic boards at the front because it can be a, a bit noisy, and so this can try and minimise uh, the outside noise. And I'm going to click back. So you say that the classroom adapts to whatever the teacher are trying to do at that time right exactly it, it, it's we are creating this and you can see in the back here our thinking zone which is quite a comfortable area it's meant to be where we are students are reflecting on what they're going to be doing for their projects uh, we have had other classrooms where we've had bean bags as well so this is a process where we have been speaking with the school about their needs it's not just us giving them the designs. We are asking them questions. What, what is the philosophy of the school as well? So there is a lot of planning that goes into this. We don't just pick out furniture and say, this looks fantastic. We also train the teachers on how to use the classroom. So the whole project includes training, the different spaces, but also training of activities to use with the technology. So this is, as Mateo said, this is a school. It's a beanbag right there. Yeah, I'm picking up with the one. Can you see right, right, right here? Yeah, this is the one that actually had the beanbag on it. So I have more. I'll, you keep talking. I'll bring different designs that we incorporate different elements with it. You, you, you talk about the soundproofing. So this is the sound yes. on on the on the, the top of the so again we, we can go literally crazy when designing this together with you guys. Yeah. Exactly. So you know there's quite a large classroom that is behind Mateus. You can see there. If you have a small classroom, we can do this as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can do in the classroom. So yeah, I think that's uh, are there any questions? I guess maybe we're going to get towards that because we're near the end of the webinar. So I'm going to move on to Stanton. Thanks for that, um, Kimberly. I, I find it fascinating um, and uh, all the pictures, but that is real life and real South African life because we've had a comment about it's easy when you have lots of money and it's easy when it's in Europe or somewhere like that. But, but I think it's mm. critical to understand that we can do this in uh, not necessarily the most uh, affluent spaces in South Africa because Mexico, Spain, Peru, <laughs> not all just, you know, the, 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 the top end markets. Um, great. Stanton, are you ready? Yes, great. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Much yeah. time so that we can have some Q and A at the end. But uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap uh, up quickly. I think uh, yes, Kimberly you. did such a great job. So um, I'm with IT Master. I'm HP's partner in South Africa, and I think as you've seen, and it's come out quite clearly from the presentations before that companies today are, are measured more than profit. It's measured by the value that they create in society. And that's what we're about. And I think as we looked at this, we are HP's local partner. So we do understand the local landscape. So I, I think questions that are coming through that's coming out of, uh, out of the session is more around how, how are we gonna be able to afford this? What about that number of students, et cetera, that's there. And I think um, just to give you a quick introduction in one minute, we are in nine provinces. 
Um, and all of the things that are important that's been driven by our partner HP is also been driven locally. So beside being in nine provinces, what it's talking about is empowerment, the empowerment within the nine provinces that we, we are localized, we use it local people within the provinces and we look at that. The headcount is 75, but it's more talking about empowerment, dignity and respect. And how do we, and we expect that the engagement with, with us um, you would find that the people that we would engage with would, would be, we would demonstrate this way of working. And I think one of the, the, the major, um, uh, let's say, driving points for the organization is how do we impact um, schools and education and, and tying into HP's vision uh, of the 100 million students. I mean, we want to look at a million students, at least 1% of that um, within South Africa to start in the last year we've impacted 270,000 students and you know it's in, in the right direction. I think what I wanted to talk about in a nutshell I think is specifically around the affordability of the solutions. Firstly the furniture is uh, that you've seen there I mean you've looked at great furniture, great setups there and you would think and I think Mateus brought it out clearly this is in South Africa. If you look at the video it looks like a PowerPoint uh, presentation and nice pictures but that's actually local it's in South Africa and working well I think what we looked at it to add value during this COVID time and the, the new normal and the normals that we're finding ourselves is how do we bring innovative solutions to fund this and I think it's uh, each scenario is different but I think we have brought in we've partnered with financial institutions HP being one of them and, and others to see how do we bring the affordability to the classroom and it's not just on the on the devices so we can look at the devices and the finance the financing models are very basic can go from very basic where we just fund the devices over a specific time and and you know pay back at a very low rate i mean one of the things is funding and the other thing is interest rate this is below all the rates that are out there because this is education and we can go to the level of funding the entire solution including the furniture including the, the, the entire life cycle. And we can go into education as a service. And as you can see, there's a lot of professional services around this. You don't have to be afraid around, um, will this work in our school? That's what we're here for. We're here to come in and tell you, this is how we will make it work within the school. These are the parameters. Uh, these are maybe some of the challenges and we see how do we work together with this uh, moving forward. I think um we're a local company and we're working all provinces we've been in four and a half thousand schools and rian i'm gonna stop right there and hand over to you i think that was basically the message i think if we ask can i just tell a little bit of history because i kind of understand yeah, sure. for, for a few years already and uh, that, that that little project that i was mentioning that that we kind of uh, went to newcastle with yellow yeah. honey so the part of that help us enable right better learning outcomes in that school was actually it master so in stanton put his team to kind of attest it out this idea to really, you guys don't want to do everything this on a rural community in South Africa? It says, yeah, why, why not? So uh, Stanton, Stanton, thank you so much for, for the partnership. I, I think after a few years, you're kind of realizing that we kind of moved and put much more structure in, into this. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to see how every single of you uh, here on, on the call Will be interfacing with us and well and uh, redesigning your learning experiences i'm really looking forward to that and and again count on us right to work together with you to find that that solution and to tony's uh rian on your comment on the affordability side again that's not one size fits all it's a shame that i was trying to look at what, one of the pictures of a school that we implemented in colombia the the school is in bosa which is the poorest neighborhood in bogota so uh together with them we, we design a classroom that fit, well, their, their model on it. And uh, just to give you an idea, after 12 months implementing that, that this, the, the version of this for that school, which is on, on a poor neighborhood, that school gained 28 positions on the Bogota ranking on their standardized wow. testing they have. It's called Prueba Saber. So yeah, Spanish is part of my repertoire it too, <laughs> sir. So, uh, and uh, and uh, the beauty of that is that when we look at the national level, that school gained 289 positions on the ranking, 289 wow. in 12 months. So it doesn't matter if you are a private school in Belgium, like I showed a classroom before, a semi-private school like the one that I have behind me, uh, get a head college that Kim have behind her, an Indonesia classroom behind Stanton, right? 
it, it, it doesn't matter where, where you are. We, we, as, as I put in one of my slides, right? Remember the budget? We still know that you do not have enough money to do everything that you want, but we want to find creative solutions to enable you to bring yeah. meaningful, meaningful outcomes and meaningful learning experience for everybody, right? So uh, yeah, it's not a one size fits all. Let, let's find a way. For sure not. I'm going to ask, uh, yeah, Santon, that's good. Let's let's open, we've, we've got a great question there. I just want to make a few uh, remarks because uh, I think a lot of people will be watching the the recording as well. Um, but yeah, maybe if I started in, in uh, Spanish and uh, French, maybe I should say, Niabonga, Kiale Boja, Donkey, Obrigado. Thanks so much for, for all the presentations. Um, uh, thank you in many languages because I think what we're trying to do is really reinvent education. Um, and I think that's a little bit of a, a nuance that I want to put onto it. It's not by this seat that's or chair that's on wheels, it's not put in this. Um, sound blocking device that makes it quite, it's really thinking what is required in that context for that school so that education and education outcomes is better. Um, a scary statistic that you that you shared, um, Matthias, was 65% um, of kids, what was that? Entering, so so I'll, I'll say again, right? So 65% uh, of the kids entering in primary school today will be working on jobs that do not exist. Yeah, that means that 35% of kids that we are teaching will go into jobs that we know. That is a third of our effort is actually productive if we frame it like that. So we've got to teach mm -hmm. differently. Uh, 65 sounds you know, scary. But we, we, we're putting 100% of our effort in a third, in 35. So, so I think we've got to start reimagining re uh, and, and definitely not the one size fits all. What I love about the, the process is it's architecture as well as technology, as well as people. And the PD side is so important. We've got a lot of teachers, educators online. And PD costs very little if you see what tools are available for free, even share today. <laughs> the the um, online teaching assistant. Uh, so I hear a lot about the budget and I'm going to say, and I'm not insensitive or insensitive to, to budgetary constraints, but even the free stuff is not being used <laughs> because the free stuff for some reason, uh, I don't know, doesn't get president. Uh, but I think we've got to challenge ourselves to say, we can't complain about budget, 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 and we don't participate in the free available resources so that we start thinking differently. And, and that's just me being a, a dad to a lot of teachers at this point in time. I'm sad to say that at the beginning of lockdown, I said, I hope we don't come to three months later and none of us have learned new skills. And I think a lot of people just waited for going back to 2019. There was an ideal time to learn typing, to learn uh, a lot of the apps that are being used because we didn't have the impact of all the daily activities in, in that. And I'm not saying that teachers didn't do good. I just think we missed PD opportunities in there. Um, there's a saying in architecture, Matthias, uh, and I don't know if uh, Kimberly, you want to join. It says that first we define our spaces and then our spaces define us. <laughs> we somehow become where we live, how we live. So after we've built or designed the space, suddenly a thinking space becomes thinking. <laughs> a maker space becomes maker, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, what, whatever those spaces are, you know, we've got a pajama lounge. We go sit there with pajamas <laughs> and watch TV, but we never had one in our previous house, but suddenly we have one and the space de designed. So I think um, let's, let's start using right language and, 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 and getting to these architectural designs, which is very little on, on um, technology. You know, HP is known for technology, but suddenly there's a design thinking that's coming through. Um, and then on the budget, the last one, and then we'll look at those two questions. Um, um, <laughs> both, both. well, the first one definitely talking about- uh, Oh, I'm, I'm ready for them, Rian. Don't worry about it. I, I, I'm, I'm ready to jump on board, yeah. <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna throw the challenge out to, to the audience and to our education sector, budgetary wise. Um, how can we afford it is always a the question my reverse question on that is how can we afford to not do this because exactly. we are lowest in pisa 
Mateus, <laughs> uh, not Spain, South Africa. We are ranking so low. How can the opportunity cost of not changing this now means that we are 10, 20, 30 years from now, a bottom of the barrel country, a bottom of, bottom of a barrel economy. So I think we've got to rethink and say, how do we just re-slice the pie? But there's money. We've got to we've got to find the money. Mateus and the team, can you uh, look I'll, at I'll, I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you. Lydia, to your question, right? Thank you for loving the ideas. This is not just an idea. This is a plan that we are executing, right? So uh, if you want to kind of uh, see how that will look like, right? For larger classrooms, smaller classrooms, medium classrooms, the only thing you need to do, talk to Rian, talk to Amit, Kim, and Stanton in here. You just drop us a line and we start the process with you. Guess how? We're going to do a readiness assessment. We're going to listen to what it's important for you. And from that exercise, we can design your journey for that. Again, this is not just an idea. We are executing this in the multiple questions that you see uh, behind us, right? So hopefully that helped you answer that, that one, okay? The second one, Sean, uh, thank you for loving the idea. And yes, as you said, I'm tired of just talking about it, right? Literally. It's uh, every single time I go to EWF or Bet in London to discuss the, with the leader, country leadership of the countries. And they keep talking about the same thing over and over and over again. And really, I don't see them doing much about it. We got tired and we decided to do this, right? So uh, we, we are taking a risk together with you, right? We think that we got the right components that needs to be in place to help enable you to bring better learning outcome for, for, for your students. And the reason why we got to this formula is because we've been failing for the past 10 years and we have been learning from those failures, right? As, as I said before, I've written plans for governments, do this and they don't do it. Or we, we, we kind of focus in a few areas and they don't have the capability. And uh, now, oh, now you need the teacher that knows how to do this and they didn't have it. Oh, find the training. Oh, it's not there. Oh, it's not exactly that addresses what we need. So we decided to stop talking about it and we are now offering this capability to you guys, right? So uh, uh, again, Sean, as media, if you wanna get this journey started, you talk to Kimberly, Amit, Stanton, and Rian here. And uh, let, let's get your journey started as well. And Debbie, you brought an amazing point, right? Because as I said before, teachers for us are the agents of transformation. So how do we get them on board, right? It's a simple question. Well, guess what we do in one of our planning workshops? Yeah, that's one of the things that we go over. What it needs to be in place, what kind of a mentality needs to be there. We are literally trying to put a change management process available for you. So you, without even noticing, will be going to this kind of a journey together with us and developing the right skill sets using the time of you and your team correctly not focusing on everything that it's available, as you run said, that's tons of free stuff in there. What's really meaningful for me? Well, we picked a few that we believe that if we get them together, we might help you reinvent what education means for you, right? So again, we're, we're taking a risk. Hopefully that, that will kind of uh, pan out. And uh, together, let's see if, uh, again, we can, uh, well, build more experience like this in South Africa, right? And I have a new one. Should I read that one? I have not read oh, that one. Mateus, can I just yes. also answer that question? Because I, I just want to bring up a comment from a, a South African teacher. And uh, we were doing a workshop and I asked them what they thought about the project before and what they think now. And what they thought about the pro project, they said it was something very difficult. And what they think now, it is something that can help make my work easy. So seeing the difference when they thought this is what it was when it started, but you know what? I've seen the tools and it's going to make my life easier. Thanks Thank so you. much, Kim. And Sean, just to address your, your point, right? So, uh, and how can we make this sustainable long-term? I may, I may talk that for us here at HP, sustainability is something important, right? So how can we just stop kind of a focusing on the short-term and focus on building long-term? So as part of this reinvention process, that we're making available for you. Remember that we, we, we do a survey, right? To ask, what do you think about yourself on day one? And now we kind of uh, ask you again after a period of time to see, well, what changed? What areas improved? What areas remained the same? What areas got worse than, than, than before? 
Well, guess what the next step is right after that? Well, we're going to share that information with you. And guess what we're going to be doing right after that? Well, we're going to be replanning because we might need to make some adjustments. Uh, we might need to redesign and bring new components to that experience. Yeah, we might need to retrain you. Uh, and yeah, we might need a different tool for the job. Guess what? Exactly what we're trying to bring, bring to the table is that, well, after three months, six months, 12 months, we can assess you again, provide that data. And based on data, not on perception, not on what you think it's working, based on data, you can make decisions to keep improving and keep improving and keep improving. And guess who sets the goal for that, what improvement looks like? Well, you. You're going to do the survey. You're going to be telling us what needs to be get better. And guess what? We're going to be working together to design what that new journey will look like, right? Imagine if we do this every 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. That means that you can, every now and then, keep pushing yourselves to get better and get better and get better. How that will look like, I don't have a clue, but I'm looking forward to see how that will be over there in South Africa. I think that's a great way to, to close this session, to, to know that there's potential, but there's partnership and the teachers. Uh, and yes, Debbie asked a great question. How do we get the teachers on board? Um, Kimberly answered that question. If we show the teachers how this improves the outcomes and their lives. Teachers are married to the idea of learning um, and, and then they've, then they've uh, done their job. So. I really like the idea. Um, two last yeah, comments. And, and Rian, so, sorry, I, I'll, I'll keep just to bring another note, right? If you guys have not noticed yet, is step number one that we do on this transformation is ask teachers, what do they think about this, right? And based on their voices together with the leaders and your students, right? We put all of that together to say, this is how you look like. Again, the teachers, you own this process from day one. Absolutely. Leaders. You own this process from day one. And yes, your students will own this process from day one. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> thinking, thinking differently um, and, and very much thinking solutions. I think you mentioned it earlier. We're not talking products. We're talking solutions, innovative solutions for your school. And I think that's what I like about this process. And that's what I really like about flighting this webinar. So let's think constructively in the context of our own space. Maybe just a side comment on the difficulty between budget on the one side and the overcrowding of classes. I don't think it's the big classes means it's a big space. It means it's a big number of students. But what we heard some people say in lockdown was, we want the best teacher, not the smallest number of learners. <laughs> you know, so there's already a paradigm shifting because some of our schools went back into the school hall with 150 learners learning. Suddenly the space was different the management, management was different, the paradigm was different, and the best teachers still taught. So I think there's some something to say about let's mm -hmm. rethink a lot of things. I'm not saying that's the answer. We're not going to go to university lecture halls of 150 people, but but there's there's value in thinking about things differently. So guys, we're going to yeah. close the session. Four months, please. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I just want to go back to Lydia's uh, I mean, question with regards to how do we move forward for less privileged schools. I mean, keeping in line with HP sustainability, we all know that the corporates have a budget that they need to utilize within each fiscal year called the corporate social responsibility or investment budget. What we can do is with the readiness assessment, once it's done and dusted, we, we provide that back to the school. They can then go and engage corporates to say, mm -hmm. don't you want to adopt a classroom or adopt a school? and utilize that budget there for the future leaders of South Africa. We are investing in our basic education or secondary education as well. Those students will be our future leaders. Very much so. That is an option. Um, and, and please talk to us about that. I'm going to end off this session, guys. We can talk about this for a long time. And hopefully, uh, I know that Matthias is going to be in the country in a short while. So we'll, we'll have a cup of coffee and, and discuss these things. Please contact me. The team can be reached through me. There's my email address. Anyone on the session, uh, contact FETSAS, contact my direct email line, and, and let's put you into touch, in touch with uh, the team and see how we can do the evaluation, get your team on the PD side. And thank you very much for your uh, participation.
Uh, thank you for all our international guests. I think everyone is more or less on the same time zone except Matthias, <laughs> who's possibly uh, uh, got the rest of the day uh, in his diary open to, to go do some more work. Thanks for sharing with us. Thanks to the team behind the scenes, the FETSAS team, as well as everyone that joined us. Uh, we hope to hear from you shortly. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Ciao, ciao. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Bye.